Starting off with the test mix load test that we ran, let's look at the test results that we get. You can access the test results by clicking on the Open and Manage Results button on a given load test. This will show you all the times that it's been run. I'm going to choose one of the times that we completed this test and we'll open it. Now this is the summary view. From the summary view you can see your top five slowest tests. Oftentimes this will be a strong indicator of which particular test has a problem. In this case I set up this test to show me which particular type of operation was going to be the slowest. In the case of strings, I don't really have anything else I'm comparing against. I'm just showing that string concatenation does take up a significant amount of time. In the case of the date time now, it's interesting to me that date time now is significantly slower than date time UTC now by several orders of magnitude. There's a bunch of additional data that you can pull from the summary view. You can also look at graphs. The graphs basically look just like what we saw as the test was running. And you can look at different sections from here. You can also drill into a particular point in time. So if we're interested only in seeing what was going on in this particular 30 second to 50 second window, we can drill in and see that particular information by adjusting the slider here at the bottom. We can get the data in a table form as well. So if we wanted to see how many particular uh, tests passed or failed for a given test, for a given scenario, we can see a summary of all the different errors. In this case, I had one error because I have a performance counter for active server pages that doesn't actually exist on my particular machine. So I'm not too concerned about that error. And then we can look at the detail. Now the detail is where the different test mixes come into play with the virtual users. If you look at this particular mix, you can see that this user here at the top is user 24, and it goes in a particular order here. And you can see that that mix is different uh, for each of the different users here. Some of them started off with the longer string test, and you can see there's a delay between each time that they ran a test, and that's specific to the type of test mix that I used. Now if we look at test mix 2, view its results, grab any one of the completed ones, and jump to its detail, you'll see that it has a very different kind of mix of what the particular users were doing as they ran through the test. If we look at test mix 3 and do the same thing, we look at its detail, you'll see that its users were hard, hardly ever running tests. Most of the time they were sitting idle. And that's because in this particular test mix, we set up a threshold of the number of tests to run per minute. And that number was not terribly high, so the users basically only had to run the test every, very infrequently. And for the last one, we can look at its test results as well and see under the detail how they ran, and you can see that they ran the same way over and over and over again. So at any given moment here, you can see that almost all of the virtual users are running their tests at the same time. And, and these vertical columns represent the fact that they were running in the exact same cyclical uh, nature of running these tests. And so they lined up very, very closely here in the results. One last thing I want to mention is that if you do run these tests in a scheduled job, you'll need to load their test results. So if you come in here and you view the test results, you can click on the Import Test Results button here, and this will let you open up your test result files. Your test result files will generally be included in your test results folder. Some additional data will be inside these subfolders, but if you scroll down, you'll see your test result files themselves. If we go ahead and open up one of these, you'll be able to then see it pulled into Visual Studio, so you'll be able to see it here. This is one of the ones that I aborted uh, from a scheduled job. So you can see it ran here, got through the, this one first, and then aborted the second one. But you can still click in and see what the test results look like. There's a lot of data that you can pull from these test results. You have a lot of different counters that you can add. In fact, there's really more data here than you probably know what to do with. It does take a little bit of time and some familiarity with your particular application to figure out which of these counters are going to be the most important to you. So spend a little time with your data. You're most interested in counters that are moving over time. If you drag something in and you see it was flat like this memory for the whole duration of your test, it's probably not as interesting as something that's moving up and down, especially if you're adding users over time. The things that kind of track with your users are the ones you're going to want to watch. 
The things that tend to spike at particular points in time during your test are the ones that you really want to drill down and investigate because those most likely represent bottlenecks in your system.